Hi everybody, uh, welcome to my uh, first maple blog. Um, so what we're doing is we want to attach some copper pipe, you can probably see it right there, to the boiler in order to make it heat the sap before um, we boil. So we're going to work on that, we're going to show how I did it uh, right from the beginning, what problems I ran into, and, um, and we're going to see where we leave off. Sure, it's gonna be fun. See ya. Hey everyone, Aaron here from Kinnebunk Pond Maple Farm. Um, if you're watching this, you probably already know that I am a big fan of uh, maple, maple syrup. Um, so what I'm gonna try to do this year is try to add some copper around my stove pipe to use the heat from that to heat the sap before it boils. So of course it takes less time to boil. Um, I haven't done it before, so uh, I'm gonna take some video as I'm doing it and we'll see how it goes. Okay. Get ready. So from what I've seen online, what most people will do is they'll take their copper tubing, they'll set it down, and then they'll start to slowly tighten it. The biggest problem that you run into because you're bending copper is kinks. So you, what you want to do is you want to go slow and take your time, and once you start to get it wrapped up, then you can stack it onto each other. Um, some people will be able to get a flat bottom instead of a round bottom so you have more surface area on the heat pipe. Um, one tip that I, I saw was uh, a gentleman had a piece of um, PVC right on his line. So if he does get a kink, he can actually tap on the PVC to help wrap, round out the kink. And, um, and that way you're not actually tapping right on the copper. So I'm going to get going some more and as I get it going I'll um, take some more video. Well, this was about as tight as I was able to make it. Um, I do have to transfer it to the long smokestack outside um, attached to the, um, the block arch, but um, we're going to put some compression fittings on there. Um, we're going to run the line. We're going to do, um, do a test run this afternoon. So um, oh, well, we're going to keep going. So you can see here I've taken off the clamp that I had holding it down. Um, it's pretty tight. I don't know how tight it needs to be, um, but we'll figure that out when we get to it. So what we need to do now is we need to put the compression fitting on there so we can slide the other attachments, the feed line and then the ball valve um, where it runs out. So what we need to do is put the compression nut on. These compression nuts are interesting. They already have the compression sleeve. You can kind of see it inside the nut already built in. And we just take this other piece this is the nut and this is where it's going to attach to the the, uh, the other valve just tighten them I don't know how I'm going to be able to do this by hand I'll show you in a so second so I've got it on there uh, finger tight um, from what I understand you get these guys on there finger tight and then you turn it one half turn to lock it into place this small nut here is 5 8 and the larger one I'm not sure what it is so I've grabbed my uh, my metric uh, adjustable wrench and uh, I hope that fits. Let me get that on there. It's hard to do without a tripod. I'll be, I'll be right back once I get them on. Alright, so I came on. Um, I put on both of my connectors over here and over here. Um, and then what I have is I have a uh, an adapter and a nut. And what this is for, this connects to my blue line. I use the blue line off of a larger tank. And I, from that tank I have the sap. The sap. Uh, I create a siphon. And I just keep filling up that big tank, and then it just keeps slowly trickling into um, the pots while they're boiling. So I'm going to get this set up. I'm going to try to put it on my pipe. I've got some um, some large hose clamps and, and a few other things to put in place. And um, I'll put them in place, and then we'll, um, we'll see you soon. Well, I have it installed um, temporarily at that. I think there's a few changes I need to make. But you can see how the blue line... I got a, um, I've got some water inside the inside of a bucket inside that barrel uh, to act as sap. So you could call it a dry run with water, I guess, if you like. Um, and the line will feed down to a siphon and into these coils, and then out the valve. Now I gotta, I don't know if I need more copper yet. I'm sure I'm gonna have to make adjustments. Um, one thought I have is I want to remove this block. That way I'll get a better siphon from up here down to here. 
and it'll have, and they'll, you, know, you know, you'll have less, th this block will be heating up less, more heat's going to go to this pipe. Um, I'm going to have plenty of height on the chimney. Uh, right now I just have a small fire going. I'm going to get this started and see what happens. Um, I mean, the chimney is plenty tall, so losing a foot's not going to hurt it. But um, we're going to get this, um, I'm going to get this thing going, get some smoke coming out the stack, and um, we'll keep getting ready for um, boiling season. I did find one problem. It looks like this fitting here is, oh, it might not be at the compression fitting. I do have a small leak, and I've been playing with this one, so it might just need to be tightened up a little bit. I was worried. It does look like the compression fitting is leaking, though, so I don't want to over-tighten it, um, because it, Apparently that's how you said that, that's how they say it makes leaks more. So we'll uh, we'll adjust it a little bit and we'll try to um, see how that goes. Well, I got I have the fire going. Um, I do not have my blower running right now, so it's taking a little bit longer than usual to get that fire hot. But I do have the pipe. Um, some smoke is coming out of it, so it is taking a little while to heat the pipe up, and the copper is not heating up just yet. But um, the fire is really going in there, so. Pretty soon, we'll be able to um, see if that water is um, getting warm before it comes out of the pipe. Um, so there, uh, what we talked about before, if you look here, you've got an extra section of chimney pipe. I'm thinking about taking that out. That way this doesn't have to go as far to come out and this will heat up uh, a lot more efficiently. Um, so let's, um, we'll take it a little bit longer and we'll see how it goes. One thing I found is super important, I figure it would be, um, is how tight those coils are wrapped around the stovepipe. The stovepipe gets warm uh, and it will heat the sap that's in the pipe, but as soon as uh, um, the water runs through, the warm, the warm sap runs through, it gets cold. It's like a, um, like you ever leave your hose out on the lawn? You leave your hose out on the lawn in the summertime, it gets really hot until the cold water comes up. But what I need to do is I probably need more pipe, more copper tubing, and I need to keep it tight. And I think some some um, some hose clamps uh, strategically placed to make sure that the loops stay tight will help to keep the whole thing um, running nice and tight. The fire died down a little bit, so I'm getting it back going. And um, let's see if I can't make this work a little bit better. Well, I finally got my blower hooked up. This is my blower for now. It's just a computer fan, 12 volt battery, and a piece of ducting to, uh, to push the fire bigger. Um, so just playing I got in some of the snow and stuff I've been putting in there today, I got a rolling boil in all of my pans. And this seems to, do, I know it makes sense, right? If the, if the fire is hotter, this is gonna do hotter. This is doing much better now that the, uh, the fire is real hot. The water does still cool off quite a bit though when it's coming out. I, probably need more copper, maybe some sort of insulator around it. Um, definitely needs to be tighter. Um, we'll keep trying to figure this out. Well, this is all for this video. Um, I'd like to say bye. I got my um, I got my helpers. Hold on a sec. Where are they? Where are they? Oh, bye. they say bye. Say bye, Grayson. Bye. And uh, we'll catch you next time.